afternoon, everybody, and welcome to STEMtastic 21. We are delighted now to welcome Paula McMahon, who, as well as being an engineer at Sir Robert McAlpine, is an experienced STEM ambassador and the 2020 National Apprenticeship Service Northeast Apprenticeship Champion of the Year 2020. So we are delighted to have her here today to answer your questions. I hope that you've managed to catch some of her pre-recorded sessions through the week, but this is your chance to ask her about her work. So if you could pop your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom, I will read them out and we will pass you over to Paula to answer them. Hi there, Paula. Hi. So shall I tell you a little bit about myself while we're waiting for some questions to come in, Victoria? That would be great. Hi. So, as Victoria said, my name is Paula and I'm an engineer that works for Sir Robert McAlpine. So, Sir Robert McAlpine are a contractor that builds things uh, all over the country and we built all sorts of different things. We built stadiums and hospitals and schools and roads and lots of things. Um, I actually work for a slightly different part of the company where we actually maintain something. So that means I'm keeping something in a good condition. So I help maintain the A19, which is a road near me, a big dual carriageway, uh, which is a very important road that hundreds of thousands of people use every single day. And it looks like the questions are coming in, Victoria. So over to, the, over to you. Yes, I've got the first question that has come in. Um, from a young lady called Rosie, what is the average salary for an engineer? Oh, now that's an interesting question, Rosie. So um, the National Career Service actually has a, a website on the uh, government website where you can type in any type of um, uh, occupation and it'll give you a salary range. So for a civil engineer, it's a quite wide salary range that says it's from anything from £26,000 to £80,000, which obviously is quite quite a big difference um, and you'll find the same with lots of engineering jobs that there is actually that big difference so normally £26,000 that would be the sort of graduate engineer level so the type of person that has done a degree and then gone into the industry and they don't have that much experience but they maybe have some good qualifications and they're starting off on the career and then towards the top end of the scale is obviously the people with um, a lot more experience that are looking after like big jobs, maybe lots of different people. Um, and so it, it is quite a wide range, but like many occupations, the more experienced you get and the bigger the, the sort of job and the bigger the role that you've got, the more you get paid. Oh. Hope that answers your question, Rosie. Good to know. That sounds, yeah, very broad. So we've had a couple more questions pop up. What advice would you give me looking to start a career in engineering? Excellent question. So advice for starting a, a career. So if you haven't already looked around, then you need to research sort of different types of engineers and different companies and uh, or maybe even different courses if that's what you, you're going to do next, if you're going to do a, um, some sort of academic course. So if you look around for all of your different options, so that's the first thing you need to do. And then the second thing you need to do is obviously then decide well, what you're going to go for. And you need to decide this is my ideal um so it might not my, my ideal might be say an apprenticeship which would be my ideal and that's what i did because you're learning at the same time as you're earning and you might say i want to have an apprenticeship at that company then that's my plan a that's what i really want to do but for lots of reasons it might not work out the company might not be offering apprenticeships that year you may not get the results uh, you may have missed a deadline to get an application in there might be lots of people applied for that job and you just didn't get an interview or anything in between. Um, so always have different plans. So your plans would be, you know, it may be an apprenticeship and then a course and it might be a few different um, colleges or universities that you go to. But the real advice is, and this is for going for anything, is you need to make sure that you've got the best possible version of you on that piece of paper, that application form, or if it's on the computer, what you're copying into that computer screen. Because what you need to do is you need to make sure that the person that's looking at it can see you on that piece of paper so make sure that anything that you do that makes you you 
you, you put on there all that good stuff. You could be part-time jobs. It could be helping a neighbour or looking after a sibling. Um, it could have been that you've looked for work experience or you've done some research and you really want to work for that company. But whatever, whatever makes you you and whatever gives you that best possible chance, make sure it's on there. Because remember, that's the only thing they know about you. They don't know you at all. All they can see is what, what you've provided them in writing. Great advice. Thank you, Paula. And then we've got Rosie back on again. Uh, do women in engineering earn the same as men? That's a very topical question for you. It is a very topical question. So I've, Rosie, most of the time earned more than the men because I've mostly been in charge of them, which is pretty cool. Um, but yes, normally um, a, a job is advertised or uh, a certain position is at a certain grade and um, I would not expect that two engineers regardless of the gender doing the same job to be paid a different wage. No oh, that's good that's good good to know and then we have another question does Sir Robert McAlpine offer a, apprenticeships? I think you've covered that uh, yes, we do. Uh, normally, uh, we normally take on quite a few apprentices a year and we have quite a few apprentices on our books now. Unfortunately, this year we haven't taken on any to date, uh, but you just keep looking out on the website and, um, you know, at some point we may this year um, take on more apprentices. Obviously, it's been a very difficult year with COVID and everything. So there's there's lots of different uh, people that it's a little bit of a strange situation this year, but obviously at some point soon it'll um, get back to normal. But yes. keep looking. So that's another another bit of advice for everybody. Keep looking. So do all the searches, keep looking, and then put them applications in as soon as you can. Great. And the next question, what is the coolest thing you have helped to build? <gasps> The coolest thing I've helped to build. Oh, now that's a question. I've done some pretty cool stuff. So I've helped, I've been underneath the Thames on the uh, looking at the Thames barrier. So the Thames barrier, um, everything you design has a design life normally around about 40 or 50 years we say we're going to build this to last that long and the Thames barrier was was reaching the end of that design life so we had to investigate it to see what condition it was in so then we could say what do we need to do to it to make it last longer we wanted it to last another 100 years so I think it was it wasn't something I built but I think it was pretty cool that I've been underneath the Thames barrier underneath the Thames and not many people get to do that at all so that I think that's pretty cool um but other things that have built have built lots of things that sort of uh what was pretty cool was Dubai aluminium in Dubai so I designed all of the entrance works so really fancy entrance building a bit it looked a bit like a hotel it was that higher specification because they really wanted it to be nice and fancy so that was a really good building and it even had its own um bus depot because it was such a big site absolutely massive site buildings like huge buildings that you wouldn't believe and and I designed all of that and I get I got to go over to Dubai once to see it all so that was pretty cool as well wow that sounds amazing that sounds really cool and so you're in obviously structural engineering do you know much about the other sectors so I come from a medical background and I really really fancy even though I'm 52 I quite like the idea of a career change one thing that I'm interested in is medical engineering so things like prosthetics and 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 stuff like that that have a practical and incredibly technical use in today's world did you learn about any of that in your journey into engineering or no, so that, that would be biomedical engineering, obviously Sorry. looking at biology uh, in a medical context. And biomedical engineering is very much a combination of biology, mm. mechanical engineering and electronics is really the three sort of key aspects of it. So um, because I studied civil engineering um, and civil engineers and mechanical engineers study some similar topics, but the mechanical part of it, I didn't study the sort of nuts and bolts and um and sort of equipment type things is what a yeah. mechanical engineer would or a biomedical engineer would study um and civil engineers study sort of 
bigger things, more infrastructure things, more buildings, yeah. roads, bridges, drainage, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, there's lots of different overlaps in, in many of the different engineers. So for example, looking at civil engineers and electrical engineers, uh, sorry, civil engineers and mechanical engineers, we'd all study um, uh, like structural mechanics so how loads travel through a building say we'd we'd, we'd have an amount of e of that each and doing the maths associated with um with helping things stand up if you like um whereas a mechanical engineer and a biomedical engineer would both study um them sort of components and things that move inside of machines and there is an awful lot of overlaps between different disciplines of engineering but there is some there's lots of similarities through all of them all of them have transferable skills uh, such as sort of just maths problem solving um leadership management communication things like that uh, are through every branch of engineering ah so that actually leads into rosie's next question i'm interested in sport are there any roles for engineering in that sector oh now you are asking um so people like who do biomechanical engineering obviously uh could help out in certain sports aspects because um they might uh design equipment that's used in sports off the top of my head i can't think of anything but they'd definitely be utilized in things like um uh, uh disability sports uh, you'd mm. be very much interested in things like that um I mean, sports, sports science, I know my local university has a subject called sports science, and that's obviously very much related to sports. And I think that's very, um, not engineering, but it's uh, thinking about the medical side of things, but also about the sports psychology side of things, and obviously things like training plans and, and um, mm. health and that sort of thing. And I'm guessing uh, dietary and things like that. But other than like the biomedical engineering, I personally can't think of anything where an engineer would be involved. But obviously engineers build sports stadiums and things that people use. Uh, we'd help build things like swimming pools and, and different types of engineers would be involved in the heating systems and the pumps and things like that. But I can't think of a direct link between a sports person and an engineer other than biomechanical, uh, biomedical. Um, that's a really interesting question there. Yeah, it is. And then we have a question from Kyle here. What's the most exciting thing about your job? Oh, well, I think throughout my career, I think it's got to say uh, two things. One is the variety that every project I've gone on is totally different. And then the other thing is the legacy that you've left you know that you've worked on a project that's useful for people or fun for people or good for society generally um at the moment the thing that i really enjoy most about my job is because i don't really do that much day-to-day -day engineering anymore because i've asked to be help I'm, I'm now helping people get professionally qualified so at the moment the thing that i really really enjoy is helping people improve um because I've moved into sort of looking after the people a bit more than looking after the engineering. And I really enjoy that because it's lovely to see somebody progress and reach their full potential. Absolutely. I completely understand that, Paula. I'm a, I'm a chemist, a, a, a biochemist, and have spent my lifetime in pharmaceuticals. And I've now joined education because I'm not going to be the next Stephen Hawking, but I'm hoping to inspire the next Stephen Hawking. And it sounds as though I have a similar motivation to you. But what you've got is, it must be amazing when you're driving around and you go past a building and you see the building that, you know, you were involved in. That must must be incredible. It That's is, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. I mean, the last project that I worked on before I started working for the Roman Calpine was a very large, um, like 200 million pound project just down the road. Um, but, 10 minute drive away and you know I look at the site now and I was involved on that site when it was just nothing there was nothing there other than weeds basically and so I helped plan everything I had a design team that designed everything and then I went on site and I was construction manager so I actually saw things being built so it's pretty good to know that that plant's up and running now and you know lots of people are working there and producing mm. things that's needed for industry so that that's really 
really good yeah and obviously now then working for Sir Robert McAlpine I was the highway structures manager and I know that the very road that I use well not at the moment every day because I'm at home most of the time now <laughs> yeah. but um that it, under ordinary circumstances I would use every single day you know that I'm part of the team that helps maintain that keep the public safe keep the road running um you know make sure that drains don't get blocked so the road doesn't get flooded um and everything you know everything from the the maintenance contract includes the trees the bridges the roads the the safety fences which most people call crash barriers um the signposts the lighting everything there's lots and lots of different things that um people don't think about that are involved in in looking after just one road absolutely and of course I guess as well, just listening to you talking about that, it, it, um, it's a reminder for us all that there's um, opportunities for um, engineering around the world because we all need L um, roads and buildings and things. Oh, and I've just seen more questions. So did you do an apprenticeship and was there a time you weren't sure you were in the right field for you? That's a good question. Oh, that is a good question. So, yes, I did do an apprenticeship. I was really, really lucky that when I was at school, um, I had a careers officer, which I know some schools do and some schools don't have careers officers um, at the moment. Uh, but, but I was lucky that we had a careers officer at school and speaking to him, um, we sort of said, what? What sort of things are you good at what do you enjoy doing and engineering was definitely up there I enjoyed solving problems I was good at maths um, I enjoyed the sciences so that was definitely up there and um, so I got my work experience we had a week's work experience outside of school and um, the, my local council which was Cleveland County Council at the time um, sort of said oh yeah we'll we'll take you in for a week and during that week I went around all the different um departments and found out lots of different things about engineering all the, the the width of just what one council does just the engineering departments in one council does and I found out about their training scheme uh, which is what it was called at the time it would now be called an apprenticeship um, and I thought this is where I want to work so that was my plan A and I was extremely lucky that I made the application and I, and I got my plan A so right from 16 I was an apprentice and on my apprenticeship, they, they sponsored me to do my ONC part-time, which was a BTEC. And then I they sponsored me to do my degree full-time. Um, so I was really, really lucky that I did all of that training. So I got the experience in work and I got all my qualifications and, and the company paid for everything. So that was really good. And have I sort of thought it's not the right thing for me? Well, no, not really. I mean, many people do change different jobs and change uh, sectors that's what we'd call sectors are sort of the the area in which you work and the sector I work is is obviously civil engineering and I've swapped types of projects within that as projects have come to an end and as um you know I've decided to change companies but I've never changed from being a civil engineer I've been a civil engineer my whole working life um but what I have done is is some of the projects I might not have enjoyed so much and some of the companies I may not have enjoyed so much so I've just looked around and, and then moved um so that's another reason why you need to do your research into the companies and have a look and uh, see what they've got online see what they've got on their social media to sh see what type of companies they are and certainly a company like Sir Robert McAlpine you'll very clearly see that we've got many of our employees that are happy to talk about the company and happy to um, say you know it's a good company to work for and that would be what I would call an employer of choice that it's a good company to work for we also have lots of people that's worked with us for decades I'm only new I've only worked for Sir Robert McAlpine for about six or seven years uh, but there's many people that's worked there for 37 years wow. yeah and uh, you know they literally started from school and, and then they retire um, working for the company and that's the sign of a really good company that the employees don't move absolutely absolutely that sounds great well there was another question linked in with that that uh, when did you first realize you wanted to work as an engineer so i guess your answer to that is around about 16. uh yeah really? younger yeah younger sort yeah. of so talking about it i'd have probably been 
15 I might have been 14 when I did my work experience but it was probably 15 um so then really yeah. and I mean some people some ask sort of why civil engineering well like many people if you speak to sort of many adults and people that are at work many people have, have ended up with a job just because that was the opportunity that was presented to them either they didn't know anything else or or like myself it was like that's just happened to be where I was and then I went yeah that, that's for me and that's what I'm going for so I didn't particularly sit down at sort of age 15 and say what are all of these sectors what's all the different things didn't even know they existed nobody explained it to me I didn't know there was anything I thought an engineer was an engineer I didn't realize that there was all these different things I could do all these different areas that could work in um, which is why I sort of help people understand so they can make sure they're in the right heading in the right direction for themselves um but I was lucky that you know the the opportunity that was presented to me was to work for the council and that was in civil engineering and you know I didn't choose civil engineering but I sort of chose an engineering type job and I'm still doing it 30 years later so mm -hmm. well it's that yeah you're a testimony that it's a, a good career which um leads on to the next question from Rosie do you encounter any discrimination being a female engineer and that's an interesting question because um I think there might be a bit of a misconception around engineering in that it's it's often men who go into that so a lot of people um think that it's not a job for en for females and that's not the case at all um it is very much a, a job that is suitable and enjoyable for um anybody really um a lot of people are put off because of the stereotypes of you know it isn't for women and that's that really isn't the case but there is no doubt about it there isn't as many women um working in engineering as as there is in society so in the UK there's approximately just over half of our population as a whole are female something like 51 percent and about 49 percent um, men but in engineering in all different sectors there's round about 12 percent 14 percent female however the sectors vary dramatically so um depending on whether you're looking at civil engineering chemical engineering or other types of engineering they all vary and also within each of the sectors it varies so for example where i work in construction so west sort of ceramic alpine do construction the the numbers depend around about one percent that one there's only one percent of females in construction so it doesn't matter how you look at it the numbers are not as uh, there's a lot less females that work in engineering than there is males and there's a long way to go to make sure that that workforce reflects society um so is it any different are you discriminated against um there is there is cases and there's places where yes unfortunately you will be because unfortunately that not everybody's a nice person in society you'll walk down the street and there's always somebody you know that, that might not be very nice and there's them in the workplace as well but it's nowhere near as common um as people might think um it's extremely rare that it would be discriminated against it's absolutely and utterly it's not only against company policies but it's actually against the law um so it really shouldn't happen but it probably does in a handful of cases um still but then there's the question of is it different and the answer is absolutely yes there is a lot of differences and because you are in a, a much lesser number you sometimes do turn up and people like look at you funny um if they haven't worked with a with a female or very many female um engineers in the past so as a female engineer, you, you just get used to that. And it is getting better all the time as the numbers are increasing. They're increasing all the time, the numbers of, of female entries into engineering. And um, any sort of discrimination and any negative things are getting less and less all the time. And I would say now it's more that you would be considered to be, oh, it's a surprise that you're there rather than um, anything else. But I would always expect that if I turned up on a new site, that there would be an amount of surprise from at least one person. 
And that leads on to another very good question is, what do you think we can do to encourage more women to undertake engineering roles? I mean, obviously this kind of activity, which we hope lots and lots of people will watch and enjoy after the event, um, is great. But you know, what, what, can, what can we do as a society to encourage more women in engineering? So there is lots and lots of different um, things out there that, uh, that are going for that goal because many people agree that we need to have that sort of equal or much closer to the equal workforce because it is better for uh, companies um, and it's better for society because remember engineers are making decisions that affect society so if you've got 50% of the population that are female but only a, a small percentage that are in the workforce that's making them decisions it doesn't really work out very well. So there's lots of different um, organisations working towards the goal. Women's Engineering Society is one, um, but all of the engineering institutions, so I, I work closely with the Institution of Civil Engineers, and we have lots of different things that we're doing to try and help get this sort of gender equality. And we do training to try and train and persuade employers to, you know, to make it, as easy or even more attractive for, for females by by showing that there is females in the industry. So you will see on lots of websites now, you will actually see that, um, that lots of pictures of people in the workforce will actually hopefully have uh, people of, of both genders and also different colour skins and different ages and all sorts of different things. We're trying to show that because you've got to see it to be it. So I think many different organisations and companies are trying to show that, you know, a different range of their employees in order to attract new ones. And then obviously uh, myself as a STEM ambassador, of which there's thousands of STEM ambassadors in the country, um, we're also trying to do the same thing. And um, many of our male uh, STEM ambassadors are sort of very much saying females are, are, are welcome into the into the industry and obviously someone like myself it's always apparent you know because I am a female in the industry hopefully that encourages others in there as well um, but yeah there's lots and lots to be done why we get such a drop off is there's been studies being done and Again, it's just what society think, what's what's already in your brain, what you're sort of programmed to think, what other people are telling you. And often them other people that are telling you you can't do it don't actually have any direct experience. Um, so maybe, um, you know, we just need to listen to ourselves a bit more sometimes than listening to other people. Very much so. So I think the last question that we've got here is, is there anything you wish you knew before you became an engineer? That's an interesting question. Oof. Well, in terms of sort of technical things, you learn them things all the time. Um, in terms of, uh, I think I think people as they get older, I think um, they go through sort of a transition. And I remember when I was younger, I was um, very... I mean, people might say I'm gobby now, <laughs> but I was very, very sort of vocal, uh, a lot more vocal when I was younger and I was very opinionated and maybe I didn't listen to people as much as I do now. Um, I, I, I was um, quite a confident young lady and, uh, and so I think as I've got older, I've learned to talk less and listen more and I think that's something that um, has helped me in things because there's lots of people that have lots of good things to say so um you know maybe we should listen a lot more especially when it's like parents and things which i didn't do very much of well that sounds like very good advice i'm going to make sure i play back your video to my children so they listen <laughs> to me more well i think that that's it and i think that we are running out of time i'm not sure how much longer we've got my it's only a minute or so left yeah yeah, so. yeah yeah well so it's been really really lovely to have you on thank you so much for joining us um and if we do get any more questions yeah i can see people are leaving now um if we do get any more questions i will send them over to you um and yeah thank you so much once again for both being part of stemtastic 21 
you're welcome and I hope everybody gets inspired about something that they can uh, stick with the STEM studies and help make them make the uh, right decisions for them for the next step. Absolutely, me too. Thank you so much, Paula. You're welcome, Thank Victoria. You. Bye bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye.